Thank you for watching, and remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. There we go. I told me to come later. Right they back to come. where we should be. Yeah. How does that even work? That is a All glass right. half full if I've never heard of it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yes, a glass of spilled wine. Oh my <laughs> um, all right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great day. We'll keep it rolling here on America's Morning Headquarters until noon. And lots to track here as we head on through this uh, mid part of the week. Uh, we're still dealing with some issues in the West with some wet weather and then cranking up in the northern plains, upper Midwest. Some snow. Yeah, crank it up to the an right hour. hour. All right. That's what Much issues. different story. All right, well, America's Morning Headquarters rolling on until noon. Thank you so much for joining us here. It is Wednesday. We'll get you through hump day and through the rest of the week. We do have um, a big system crossing the country. It's going to bring everything. Storms. Yep. Rain. Check. Snow. Check. Blizzard. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Yes. We'll get to all that. Indeed. Right, on the move, it starts as rain. It changes over to snow when the cold air comes in. And we have our first winter storm watch up of the event. It does include Watertown in South Dakota, also Clear Lake. And it's not just for snow. The concern here is that, yes, we may get a couple of inches of snow, but more importantly, blizzard conditions are possible and it says that in that winter storm watch so we've got an area that will get a widespread you know two to four inches of snow to the north there can be even more where we're getting some rain right now and some wet snow mixing on in but everything really evolves over the next 36 hours look at today we've got winds very gusty 25 30 miles per hour to start winds are from the south here and so i mean technically that's a warm wind it won't feel warm but you know that's the direction it's coming from then here comes our low pressure by tomorrow morning here uh, continuing to stream up through the upper Midwest and Western lakes. This is going to track like this up into Canada. So then on the Western edge of it, now we start to get in the cold air and this low storms strength. are possible. Severe weather is a possibility as well. The red zone includes much of Oklahoma, Tulsa, right on the northern edge of it, Oklahoma City, Ataka, Sulphur Springs, down to Dallas, um, and Fort Worth. You've got the risk of thunderstorms that could be severe. The timing of that is not until about the dinner hour. So you see how we are today. You're mostly cloudy all day. Temps are going to be in the mid 70s. You're probably not going to have that low cloudiness all day. Um, the sky is going to be cloudy, maybe brightening a little bit, but then thunderstorms come in by this evening. Hail the main threat. Damaging winds, a secondary threat. There's also an isolated tornado risk. It's a on the Torcon across this area. So here's the setup. We're going to have these uh, two low pressure systems set up here, keeping us though in the warm sector right across Oklahoma into Texas. You know, we, we have had the winds from the south yesterday. We have it again today. That brings back moisture. It's why we have all that cloudiness out there this morning. And so we are going to be watching what the winds do with height. How much do they turn? When do we get that cold pocket of air aloft coming in? And that would definitely increase the hail threat when that happens. We see thunderstorms develop even as early as 4 o'clock this afternoon. Oklahoma City and Enid, Wichita, you're in that. Kansas City, watching you as well. Dallas, not yet, until we get past about the dinner hour. Now we see some cells develop. Watching any of the discrete cells especially, those are the ones that could rotate, either bringing some large hail, Alex, or even the threat for that isolated tornado. More of a wind threat as we get through the overnight, although the risk for severe does go down once we get past about 10 o'clock. Uh, but yeah, for us, uh, initially, it's the warm conditions, milder conditions. Then we'll drop the numbers down a bit and then we'll start to warm right back up. So it's not kind of a, it's not a lasting no, chill down. That we, we haven't been able to do that yet this year in the atmosphere. It's there's been some cold snaps. Yes, but they last like a day or two. I mean, this morning it, it was chilly earlier this week, but now this really isn't bad right. for most people out there. I mean, look at Oklahoma City starting at 60 this morning. Yeah, one of the milder spots. Yeah. No doubt about it there. Highs for the day. We're looking for some 70s and some 80s across parts of Texas. A lot of 70s. Look at Raleigh 77 for the day. Jackson as well 75 for this afternoon it's like is it really november i mean even chicago 58 degrees today exactly yeah. yes this is november above average we've got the readings in ohio west virginia kentucky um, virginia all going to be above average today and tomorrow yeah tomorrow we do see that area shrink just a little bit more so portions of the upper ohio valley mid-atlantic sections of new england still above average out there but we're starting to see those signs of some of that cooler air trying to move its way on in for tomorrow and you do see a cool down i mean minneapolis you drop from the 50s today to the 40s tomorrow, which is still not that bad just when you look at the pure temperature. Absolutely. So that jet stream plays a big role. It's uh, I like to think of it as the gatekeeper of the cold when it sinks south. 
That's when we all start to feel it. And so by midweek, you can see there's a little bit more of a dip here in the middle of the country, but there's an even larger dip that starts to take place this weekend. So there's going to be some colder air pushing well into the deep south. The dark blue. Here comes the dark blue, <laughs> and that is the colder air. Temps go below average 5 to 15 degrees. Um, this you will really notice, especially because of the change. Right, absolutely indeed. So here's your Friday. Notice the upper Midwest highs now in the 30s for places like Minneapolis, back over towards the Pier area. And yeah, remember Oklahoma City, uh, for you, you were basically you went around 60 now. 60 right now. High on Friday, <laughs> 57. Yeah. There yeah. you go. That's a faux pas or <laughs> frontal passage. Um, you're going to feel it through the south here by Friday uh, into Saturday. Look at Nashville. These are not the lows. These are the high temperatures only in the 40s. Yeah, so that weekend will no doubt be a much, much chillier time. Let's take you city by city. Starts you off in Chicago where we've been on the milder side this week. Still today above average as we near a 60 for your afternoon. But look what happens by the end of the week. We actually may be seeing a few flakes of snow flying around by that Friday uh, uh, evening. And then look at the low 40s for highs for Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. That's the November that we remember yep. in Chicago, 40 and cloudy, right? Um, let's go to Cincinnati where we've got temps in the upper 60s today, tomorrow, but there's a front. You can see what happens. Temps get knocked down to the 40s for the weekend. Yeah, that's so you feel that when you start talking about those yeah. changes in that a few, a few days. You know